people who I want to appeal to make those little slips. It happens. You have to have a plan to manage your problems effectively. How are you going to do it? Fall off the horse, you jump right back on. And welcome back. And of course, as was promised earlier in the show, uh, it is time for Brock It Dong, Miss Jenny. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Excited about today's segment? Yes, I am. We, mm. got, we got a number of questions. Yes, and uh, um, I want to throw it at this time that remember, uh, we are taking questions on any topics. So just go ahead and contact us and uh, we'll try to include them in the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's talk about why you selected the ones we'll be doing today. Well, I thought that a couple of them sort of carry on from what we did the last segment. Yeah. You know, about um, settling, mm. people settling in a relationship mm -hmm. rather than setting your expectations and then expecting, you know, expecting for those expectations to be met. Mm -hmm. And I, I just don't believe that women need to settle because we've been sold a lie mm -hmm. about the shortage of men and, and, and guys, I think, sorry guys, but I think you all play on that, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so women settle. Well, with that kind of introduction, we better just get started. <laughs> so if okay. you feel that maybe we uh, touched a, a touchy topic there about settling, you definitely want to pay attention to this. And uh, our first question for this morning says, I am in a relationship with my boyfriend for over 10 years. He knows that I want to be married, but has not proposed and even said, if I want to be married, I should help him save for my ring. Will he ever marry me? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> I, I, I mean, do you, 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 10 years is a long time, I mean. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're, if she says in a relationship, I don't know if they're living together or if they are, you know, dating, in a dating relationship mm -hmm. or what kind of relationship. I, I, I well, we know it's probably serious. I mean, typically in Belize, it's just talking serious relationship. A lot of people do move in after a while. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I remember growing up and I used to say, why would a man go look for, um, b uh, buy the milk after he's purchased the cow or after he don't get a cow? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I remember hearing that all the time, mm -hmm. which was one of the reasons they told you not to get involved in living with somebody because mm -hmm. then there was no commitment, mm -hmm. right? But the reality is, is that now women do move in and live with someone. Yeah. But I, I don't, it's a lie that's been sold to women. Mm -hmm. All right, that that we that we need. If we have a man, and I hear so many of my friends say this, before none any. And if you have a man, hold on to him because y the prospects are so slim out there. You might not ever find a man. Right? I've heard both. Yeah, I've heard the if no, before none. Yeah. In other words, don't be by yourself. Just be with someone. Anybody. Yeah, anybody. Yeah. <laughs> it's a scary concept. It's a scary thought. Yeah. Um, and don't leave because there's nobody else nobody out there. Nobody else out there. And, and it's a lie. Mm -hmm. You know, we might, we might in our heads be saying or believing what's been fed to us that, oh, there's a man shortage out there. And maybe there is or maybe there isn't. I don't know. But the point is, when you've got your life cluttered up with somebody for 10 years who is not moving backwards or forward, you don't have any room for anybody else to even make an offer to you. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I like to tell my, my young clients, if you miss the bus going to Sunny Nasi or going to Dangriga, if you miss one bus, what happens in half an hour? Another one comes Another along. Another one comes along. And it may be an air-conditioned bus <laughs> with nice seats. <laughs> that, you know, you don't know what's going to come along, but you have to have the opening for something else to come along. And what comes along generally will be better. Okay, and I, 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 just, I just don't want women to settle now. Ten I mean, years? Yeah. Is it, well, two things are, are really jumping out at me. One, is it necessary that every relationship has to end in marriage? Times have changed significantly, and a lot of people 
just don't feel it to be a priority to be married. Is but it a lack does. of communication? I know, I was going to say, is it a lack of communication? Maybe he doesn't really believe in marriage. Um, she has obviously communicated that she has. So is it a co can it be a communication issue? Well, remember we talked about this last, yeah. last segment in that prior to getting serious about even moving in, mm -hmm. women need to have this conversation with, with their partner. We, we need to have this conversation. So, what are your feelings about marriage? I, is this relationship going anywhere? Mm -hmm. You need to know that. Talk about marriage, talk about children, mm -hmm. and talk about money. Money. Yeah. It's, Those were the three know, the I remember. big one. You have to yeah. talk about money. You have to talk about, are we going to have children? How many? Because he may decide he doesn't want any and you want five. Mm -hmm. Right? You have to have that conversation. And before sitting around for 10 years hoping he won't leave, but I really want to get married, and I've said to you I want to get married, but I never asked you what your feelings were about getting married. Mm. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think like William here, because we were talking about this question before, and he said, well, why doesn't she just ask him? Propose to him? Yeah. I think according to what she says, he knows I want to be married. She has asked him, obviously. Okay. And he obviously is, is, he says, well, you have to help save for the rain. Well, you know, traditionally, and that's the other thing. As, as women, we want the gentleman who is getting married to us to buy the ring. I will buy my, my version of a male ring for you, and you're supposed to buy my engagement and my wedding ring. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the truth. And yes, we want it both, we want it both ways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we want to be treated as ladies. Mm -hmm. And be independent. And be independent. Yeah. And we, we should be able and to you have can. both. Yes. And you can. And Absolutely. So going back to the idea of settling, and you, you called it cluttering up your life. Yes. Um, do you think that people are able to recognize when they're settling? I mean, how do you know that perhaps you're just not having difficulties or growing pains in a relationship, mm -hmm. which all relationships, healthy and unhealthy, will have? Mm -hmm or you're really just settling? How can you make that distinction? If you are the one always having to give in, mm -hmm. if you are the one that's always having to pacify things, mm -hmm. if you're always afraid that this person will leave if I say something, or if I think something and I, I say what I'm thinking, then you are settling mm -hmm. because you are the one making all the compromises. Mm -hmm. That person is not making any compromises. He's holding it over you that you, there are lots of um, women out there. If you leave, you're not going to find anybody else. And I'll tell you, you have a car, right? Mm -hmm. if, some, if you bought a car new, when the car starts giving problems, do you throw good money after bad? <laughs> you want to compare it to a car? <laughs> no, I'm, saying, I'm serious. I'm, I'm saying yeah. it in terms of when you have not just a car, yeah, no, a house. Uh -huh. it, it becomes a money pit. You're yeah. putting money in and putting money in. You're investing. Mm -hmm. That's not saying money. You're investing. You're putting more. You try and to more repair it. it. Yeah, you're trying to fix it. it. Yeah. And then yeah. after a while, when it really starts to cost you, or yeah. you realize I'm just spending more trying to fix it. Right. You do get. You rid have of it. to look and say, you know what? This isn't I worth need another the investment. Car. I need another car. And relationships, I mean, I hate to put it to that, but this no, is no, a no, good example. No, 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 it makes a lot of sense, yeah. In, in that if you are, put, you, you are constantly compromising mm -hmm. and you are giving and giving, it's really time to start looking at self and saying, you know what? I'm the one that's holding this relationship together. Mm -hmm. it's, not any, it's not a compromise anymore. It's not both of us putting in our 100%. And if I hear women say this, well, I have to put in 150%. Girl, me serve you. It's time to roll. No. What? Why? And, and we're moving a little bit deeper. Why do you find this so common in Belize? We know, we know this takes place a lot. We know marriages and relationships mm -hmm. that take place where we know one or the other are settling. We can't always specify only women, but usually mm -hmm. because we hear mm -hmm. more women complain about it. Yeah. What do you find to be some of the reasons? Is it self-esteem? Is it society, uh, society's pressures? You see, we, we are socialized. We are socialized to believe that 
we need a man. Mm -hmm. Th that's how we're socialized as mm -hmm. girls. Mm -hmm. We need a man to complete you. And oh my goodness, that movie by, with um, what was his name? You complete me. Um, oh, the Jerry Maguire one? Maguire yeah, movie. yeah. Women really bought into that nonsense, you know? Mm -hmm that, oh, you need a man to complete you. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. we, we need to, I, and I've said this before, self-love. We have to first love ourselves before we can even be thinking about loving somebody else. Because if I'm broken, I'm bringing a broken, a broken person to you. Mm -hmm. So that relationship has no hope of getting off the ground, mm -hmm. right? But it's so important that I'm working on me before I go out there and get into a relationship. And if I can't do that, then we're talking about self-worth, self-esteem, all those things that happened earlier in life. And so I'm bringing a broken me into a relationship. How can that possibly work? And then what if you get into a relationship with somebody else who is broken too, mm. right? Marriage then becomes a real issue mm. because I'm marrying you because I need you. And whenever you feel that this, this thing that you need somebody, you can't function on your own independently in a relationship because we need to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Then, goodness gracious, please don't get married. So what do you okay. tell this lady? I don't know if he'll ever marry her because he sounds as if he has some commitment problems. He does not sound like somebody who can commit or is ready to commit. Mm -hmm. So will you wait around for 10 more years? Will you wait around for five more years? She's not getting any younger. And the opportunities of meeting her life partner, her soulmate, mm -hmm. are, are, are limited and, and they're, they're constricted because she is waiting around with this person who's cluttering up her life. He's cluttering up your life, darling. Run. Maybe it's time for a new car. Yes, Figure out if no. the car is giving you too much problems. Too I, I, I like that. Stop throwing good funny. money after bad. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're moving into our second question now. Um, I think I'm going to walk around now and start telling people, you need a new car. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I dated my husband for five years, got married a year ago, and I'm contemplating a divorce. I thought he would change once we got married, but he's still drinking heavily. Mm. Several issues there. Well, one, you are, you are an addiction uh, specialist, mm -hmm. so this is right up your alley. Yeah, there's several issues going on there. Hey. First, first thing, if you go into a relationship expecting people to change, or that you can change somebody. And ladies, I'm talking to you because I hear you all saying this all the He's time. Change. Oh, I can I can make him change. Or I can I can do this. You know what? People will only change if they want to. We have no control or any power over changing anyone. And if we think we do, we're living in a fool's paradise. We cannot even our children, we cannot change our children. We can go ahead and teach them what the things we need them to learn, but we can't change them. They, they have to decide they want to make the change. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. And I hope people out here are, are understanding what I'm saying. Yeah. We can change people. So when you go into a relationship thinking that you're going to, the person's going to change, you see the problems beforehand, mm -hmm. you need to not get into that because those problems are not going to go away. They'll, they'll get worse. And the stress of marriage will only exacerbate that problem. Because marriage is a stressful, it's a really stressful institution. Because you're two individuals who have your own personality and likes, dislikes, and everything else coming together. So, you know, I mean, they're, they're stressors, but you, you made the decision that you're all going to work together mm -hmm. to make this work. If you have something like drinking now, you've mm -hmm. seen this beforehand, mm -hmm. you don't want to go there until this person has, you know, has gone in and made efforts or done the, different, the work mm -hmm. to stop drinking. And not because of you, because they are concerned about their own health, mm -hmm. they're concerned about what it's doing to them. Mm -hmm. They have to do it for themselves. 
Now what happens when, when we get into a, a relationship where there's substance abuse like an, or the person may be an alcoholic? Because I don't know how, when she says drinking heavily, heavily it's I don't relative, know what that yeah. means. But if it's he's doing daily drinking or something, I mean, there's so many other things going on there. And what happens, women come in and they start mothering because they, they it, it, you know, we call You want to help them. The co-alcoholic. Yeah. You want to help that person. Mm -hmm. Problem is, they have to want to help themselves. Mm -hmm. And alcoholism, drug addiction, it's cunning, it's baffling, it's a chronic relapsing. When I say relapsing, people keep going back and doing the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. You know what that's called, right? Yeah. Um, it, it's a disease that is baffling. It isn't that, I, and I know that with alcoholics, they're like the high and lows moment, like the, yeah. the periods where they're off and then they're on again. And I think um, that that's one of the things I've heard people speak about all the time. But they made the decision to get married, which means, and, and she's saying still drinking heavily, mm -hmm. which means it was there before. Right. But see, when, when you're dating mm -hmm. and y you're partying together, mm -hmm. People don't want to see that maybe this is a problem. This is problem drinking. Mm -hmm. They're having fun, but she's thinking, okay, we get married, we'll settle down, we'll stay home more, think about having children, right? Mm -hmm. He's going to change. If you're dealing with an alcoholic or you're drinki dealing with an abuser, that's not going to change. That will only worsen. Mm -hmm. It will only worsen without help. Okay. Do you try to get him in help Again, to fix the marriage? And see, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about, mothering. Mm -hmm. You become a nag. Mm -hmm. You stop being a wife and you start being a mother. Mm -hmm. you're, you're calling his job to try to make sure he doesn't lose his job, to tell him, oh, because usually when they're, they're, they're binging on Friday mm -hmm. and they can't get up, they can't have goma on Monday. Mm -hmm. So she's, she's left with the responsibility, taking on responsibility for this person calling the job to say, well, he's sick, he's got the flu, he can't come in, whatever. Mm -hmm. She becomes mom. He resents it. He absolutely resents that, you see? Mm -hmm. So so what do you tell her? She, she number one, she She's has She's contemplating the divorce. And he there's something holding her there. Well, you're in love. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's not, let's not forget that she got married because she loves him, mm -hmm. right? But I'm telling you, it will destroy her if she tries. And the marriage will be destroyed mm -hmm. unless he gets help. Mm -hmm. Now, again, working in that field, they have to want help. Mm -hmm. They have to want help. Because if you, if, if they, if, if you try to bring him and say, fix my husband, help him, mm -hmm. he's, he's drinking too much. I have a magic wand that's going to make him all of a sudden stop drinking. Yeah. He has to want to stop drinking. Yeah, it'll be his choices after right. a while. Yeah. And you see, they, a person who is an alcoholic mm -hmm. has an over, they, they, they taste and they, the feeling that they get from drinking is so over the top. It's not like someone else, you know, if you're not, if you don't have that predisposition for alcoholism, mm -hmm. we can go out and have a drink. We can have a couple of drinks and we'll be fine. We'll go, we'll leave and we'll go home. We'll say we had enough and leave. Yes. Yeah. The person who is, who has the alcoholic tendencies can't do that. They are driven. It's called compulsion. Mm -hmm. They are driven to continue to drink. Mm -hmm. And the feeling they get is so wonderful for them. They continue to do it. And see, part of alcoholism is the inability to stay stopped. They can stop, you know. Mm -hmm. They'll stop for a little while, and then the next time they, they meet a bottle, they're going to go and again. These are people who can't walk away from a table. If, as long as there's alcohol on that table, they can't walk away from it. Yeah. All right? Problems. They have lots of problems as a result of using drinking they cannot walk away how important is it for her to get out she has if he loves her she has to tell him you know what you need to get help 
And if you don't get help, I have to leave. Mm. She has to protect herself. Mm -hmm. And God help her, she has children. Because if there are children in the home, I am sure they're quarreling. Mm -hmm. And if they're quarreling, the children are seeing that. And then let's not forget, there's something called genetic predisposition, meaning it's in the genes. So if he's an alcoholic, I'm pretty sure that he has relatives, like his father, grandfather, who are also alcoholic. Your child, if you have a child together with this person, your child will have a genetic predisposition. And if they're watching daddy drinking all the time and getting drunk, what is, what is the child learning? Mm -hmm. If the child is there and you all are quarreling all the time about the drinking, what is the child learning? What are you exposing your child to? Mm -hmm. All right? They need, this, this man needs to get help. And if you love him, you need to tell him, get help or I am leaving. I'm serious. And then follow through. And follow through. Yeah. You've got to do that. Because otherwise, they do not have the desire. They, they're not stop Because they love the alcohol. They love it. They, they have an unhealthy relationship with it. Mm -hmm. All right? And I mean, I'm sorry, that's called, it's, it's tough. But it's the only way, really and truly. And I know women who will stay for, you know, forever yeah. because, well, it's my husband, but he will, he's killing himself and you're helping him. And, and we can even take this discussion further, which we probably don't have a lot of time for right now, but how our society views uh, drinking um, and how accepting we are of yeah. alcoholics yeah. and uh, addictive behaviors. Yeah. So that's an issue. This is, this is a yeah. tough one because if she's, it's, if it, it hasn't even been a year yet and she is thinking of a divorce, it's got to be pretty bad. Yeah. All right? And if they have children, again, I say it, they are fighting, I'm sure they're fighting in front of the child. So what, what are you demonstrating for to that child? Okay. okay. Well, we hope that uh, the person is watching and has taken some advice I, from I, this. Yeah. I really do. She also needs a new car. <laughs> she need, or she needs to dump the, the, the troublesome car. <laughs> well, you know, I, I know it's hard for, for yeah. women to let go because you made a commitment. Mm -hmm. you, you and nobody wants to get divorced a year after marriage. I mean, yeah, the shame is Yeah, there's an embarrassment that. Yeah. that comes with it that you yeah. couldn't even last a year or longer. These yeah. are the things that people tell themselves yeah. sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But that, that has nowhere good to go unless he gets help. So I'm not saying just walk out. I'm saying let him know, get help. Otherwise, I'm taking my children, if you have children, mm -hmm. and we're leaving. We love you, but you are killing yourself, mm -hmm. and we cannot sit by and watch that. Or I cannot sit by and watch that. You need to get the heck out of that. Okay. All right, moving on to our third question for today. And this one is uh, one of our parenting questions. I'm a single mother who is raising a teenage son. How can I raise him to be respectful and responsible if I am working most of the time to provide for our food and his education? Can you give me some tips? Oh. Mm -hmm. I, I was a single mother. Oh. Um, you know, one of the things that we struggle with is if I have to work, and I can't spend time with my child. Mm -hmm. What's happening to my child? Mm -hmm. And we struggle with that, you know? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I believe that if you're a single mother, you, you have to work. Yeah. You absolutely have to work, but you can give your child quality time. Mm -hmm. and, and I really want to, to validate women who are single mothers, yeah. who are doing their best to, to raise a child. But I, I want to just say kudos to, to the mother yeah. for doing that because she sounds like a very responsible person, like yeah. a responsible mother. Now, quality time, quality time. When you come in, you, you, are, you want to give your child your values. When he sees you're working hard, and children appreciate that. Mm -hmm. They do. They, yeah. they, my mom. We don't know how to say it when we're young, but when we get older, we're able to. to yeah vocalize it yeah yeah so you spend make make the time wherever you can make the time make sure you have quality time where you all do something together not just have meals oh, that's one big thing have meals together mm 
as much as possible. So in the mornings you can get up before you go to work and you both sit together and have meals and you make sure when he's going off to school you're letting him know you love him, study hard, pay attention, give him give him the the kudos for going to school and doing well in school. Mm -hmm. Right? When you come home in the evening, even if it's if it's half an hour, spend time with your child, find out how his day was. Try to have meals, whatever meals you can together, have meals together. Lots of things happen over talk, a meal. Yeah, yeah. You can talk with this child. And Without the devices. Him. Right. Yeah. Put those aside and spend. Half an hour is better than no time at all. Mm -hmm. So it's quality time, but you are making sure that you're giving him your values. Mm -hmm. Right. Let, he can see that you are working, so he will have a work ethic. Mm -hmm. Particularly if you come home and you share with him too what your day has been like, yeah. right? Um, try to on weekends do things with the child. You do help him with the chores. You both do work together and do chores together and talk, mm -hmm. because it's during those teachable moments that you're able to go ahead and share your values with him, and that is so important. He has to get your values. That's interesting. And yeah. can, can we focus in on, she's talking about a teenage boy. Yes. Um, the respectful part. One of the things that we always uh, forget to realize at times when we see young men in our society and we don't necessarily approve with how they treat and talk about mm -hmm. women, yeah. um, that these are all boys who were raised by women. Mm -hmm. And the cycle often, I mean, this is my opinion here, uh, can be broken with a mom. Yeah, how does a single mom teach a young boy how to be respectful to women and others in general as they get older? She is in the best position. The Gale study, remember Mr. Yeah, um, Herbert, Herbert Gale, Gale that was here? Herbert Gale said that it wasn't the relationship with the father that was impactful on the boys, you know. It's the relationship with mom. Mm -hmm. Mom has the responsibility of talking to the boys, yeah. Mm -hmm. Talking to her boy child and teaching him about respecting women. But she is the model. Mom is the model. So if mom is cursing and yelling and screaming at the child, what is the child learning about women? Particularly if you're, if you're yelling at the child, I, I'm saying this because I just had a, a, one of my, my clients that we were talking with, that this child thinks she doesn't love him, mm -hmm. right? Well, she loves him, but she's stressed out. But it's very important that even though you're stressed out, you have to make sure that when it comes to talking with your children, that you're talking to them with love, and that you're talking to them with respect, because you are the model. And if you want your child to be respectful, you have to model respect to him. Yeah. And if you were wrong, you need to apologize and say, I was wrong. Because children need to learn to, to understand that they, if they are wrong, they admit they're wrong. Mm -hmm. But the mother is the model. And so when we see children acting out, you can go and see mama, you'll see that why the child is acting out. He's yeah. learned that at the, at the needs of the mom mm. so let's let's rehash some tips first of all have your meals together absolutely. breakfast and dinner if you can whatever you can yeah. get together absolutely and sit down sit and have them not in front of the television, no television and without devices sit together at the table because that's when you can find out what's been happening in school mm. you cannot know what's happening if you're not talking to your child mm. plus it it teaches the child that mom you know when, when babies are little, right, we, I, I, I hear parents say, oh, you got to play with this dolly. I don't want my son to play with dolly because he turned into a sissy. <laughs> You're a woman for heaven's sake. Where will this, babe, where will this boy child learn to be tender? Mm -hmm. If he's playing with a doll, he's learning how to be tender. It's not being a sissy. Mm -hmm. Then later on in life, we wonder why our boys can't be tender with their girlfriends and their wives. We never gave them the opportunity to learn tenderness. Mm -hmm. And as a mother, we shouldn't be grabbing the and going, boy, stop being a sissy. We need to leave that, encourage it, so that the child learns about tenderness. Mm -hmm. Where else will they learn it? Yeah. And as a mom, hug your babies. I hear so many mothers saying, oh, well, I love that because my mom never do that for me. Well, you know what? It's time to break that cycle. Hug your babies. 
I don't care if they're 15, if they're willing to hug you, hug them. Show them, mm -hmm. show them that tenderness so that they will know how to do that with women when they get to the age. Remember now, Marlene, I want to say this. I think we forget children are not property. We get them, God, God gives them to us as a gift so that we then teach them how to be adults. They're growing into adulthood.